This video is made possible by Zing Cases. Visit zingcases.com for a whole range of cases and accessories for your smartphone. What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV, and this is my hands-on comparison and review of the Samsung Galaxy S5 versus the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now the S4 was one of the most popular Android devices of 2013. Does the S5 live up to the hype? And is it a worthy upgrade from the S4? Well, do hit that thumbs up button and let's find out. So let's kick off with the size. The Samsung Galaxy S5 is larger compared to the S4, 5.4 millimeters in height, 2.7 millimeters in width, and it's also 0.2 millimeters thicker. Now that does firstly come down to the screen size. You've got a larger screen size on the S5, a 5.1 inch screen versus the five inch screen on the Samsung Galaxy S4. Resolution, however, has remained the same. So you've got a full 1080p resolution on both of these, 1920 by 1080. And on the S4, that comes to 441 PPI, but on the S5, it comes to 432 PPI because you've got the same resolution on a larger screen. Now, you can't really notice much of a difference in terms of the screens. Both of them are very bright and vivid, and Samsung flagship screens are usually some of the best out there anyway. So you've got some great viewing angles, great colors, and you can also customize these if needed. Now, not only is the S5 larger, but it also weighs a little bit more as well, 15 grams more compared to the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now, putting both devices side by side, you can tell that they're from the same family. The design language is very, very similar, but there's differences in material choices which do go towards the large size and the heavier weight of the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now, the S4 has that plastic hyperglaze finish which realistically speaking wasn't very popular amongst a lot of people and it's probably one of the biggest criticisms of the Samsung Galaxy S4 last year. The S5, they've tried to improve on that and they've given the S5 a perforated back with a dimple soft touch finish. Now I don't think it looks very premium but one thing I do have to say is that it feels absolutely great. It feels very very nice in the hand, it's very comfortable to hold and it's also very grippy. Now this compared to many of the other devices that I've handled does feel very very nice. Now this is still plastic so it's arguable whether you can still call it premium or not but one of the advantages that you have with the S5 is that it's IP67 certified dust and water resistant. So you can fully submerge this into water and it's really nice to see that Samsung have incorporated this into their flagship device. Now moving on to the internals, the Samsung Galaxy S4 has a Snapdragon 600 processor with a quad core 1.9 gigahertz clock speed. There's also an octa-core version available for international markets and it's got the Adreno 320 GPU with two gigabytes of RAM. The Samsung Galaxy S5 does improve on this and you've got a Snapdragon 801 processor with a quad-core 2.5 gigahertz clock speed, the Adreno 330 GPU, but you've also got just two gigabytes of RAM so they've not improved the RAM on the Samsung Galaxy S5. Not a big deal in my opinion. Now in terms of performance, the Samsung Galaxy S5 is definitely faster, one of the fastest devices out there at the moment, smooth and snappy, and it also scores higher in benchmarks compared to the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now in terms of day-to-day -day usage, you may not notice a massive difference. Your standard apps and things, it was faster, the S5, but not hugely, so I don't think for your day-to-day -day apps, you're not going to notice a massive deal of difference. For processor heavy tasks, so gaming and things, you will notice a bit of a difference on the Samsung Galaxy S5. In terms of storage, both of these come with the base 16GB model. Now, there was supposed to be a 32GB model available for the S4 as well as the S5, but these are not as widely available. I've personally not been able to find a 32 gigabyte version of the S5. They say that we should have one. Generally speaking, the most widely available version that you're going to be finding is the 16 gigabyte storage version on both devices. However, both of these do have a micro SD card slot, so you can expand the storage. The S4, you can expand it up to 64 gigabytes via the micro SD card slot. The S5 doubles on that, so you can expand it up to 128 gigabytes via the micro SD card slot. So an improvement here on the S5 with more expandable storage capacity. Now moving on to the cameras, the rear-facing camera has had an improvement. So you've got a 16 megapixel rear-facing camera on the S5 compared to the 13 megapixel rear-facing camera on the S4. Now images are improved. But in good light, you might not notice a huge little difference. I noticed on the S5, the image was slightly sharper with more contrast and a little bit more vibrance, which did look very nice. And it's definitely one of the best cameras out there at the moment. But you did notice quite a bit of a difference in terms of low light, especially when it came to video. Videoing in low light, you could clearly see a difference with the S5 and the S4, the S5 producing brighter results consistently. 
Now, while we're on the topic of video, both of these film at 1080p from the rear facing cameras, but the S5 also films at 2160p, so that's Ultra HD 4K resolution. The only problem with this was that it's not got stabilization at this resolution, so it is quite difficult to use and I found myself not using it because of this reason, but it's great to have that option. Now the front facing cameras, you've got two megapixels on both of these and in terms of images, I found that the Samsung Galaxy S4 did produce sharper results compared to the S5. Now I've noticed this quite a bit on some of the more recent cameras where the front facing camera is a little bit softer. Now I think they do this to soften the skin a little bit and there was also a beauty mode option which was switched on by default on the S5 which kept annoying me and I had to keep switching it off but I think that's what they're going for, they're going for that more of a soft look. I personally did prefer the sharper images on the S4, colours were slightly better on the S5. You also had a much wider angle lens on the S5 so if you are taking lots of group selfies then this is definitely going to come in use. Now in terms of video, this was a bit tricky from the front facing cameras. On the Samsung Galaxy S4, the image was a bit too vibrant. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, it was a bit too washed out in my opinion. So I would have liked if they went for a bit of a balance in between these two, I think would have been the sweet spot. I did find the S5 images a little bit washed out in video. No images, but I did find this in video from the front facing camera. Other improvements on the Samsung Galaxy S5 camera. Firstly, you've got very fast autofocus, so it is definitely quite fast compared to the Samsung Galaxy S4. It uses phase detection which is similar to what many DSLRs use as well. You've got selective focus, so if you do take any shots in this mode, you can refocus the image, so from the foreground to the background, or you can have the full image in focus. This works by taking multiple images at the time when you shoot images in this mode, which is quite nice. You've also got HDR real-time processing, so you can switch on HDR mode on the S5, and it'll show you in real time what the image is gonna look like, whereas on the Samsung Galaxy S4, you have to take an image and you have to wait for it to process on the Samsung Galaxy S5. You can see the result straight away and it also works with video too. Now with the connectors, the Samsung Galaxy S4 comes with a USB 2 connector whereas the Samsung Galaxy S5 comes with a USB 3 connector. So you can get faster transfer speeds from your computer as well as faster charging from your computer. This is under a flap to make this device water and dust resistant, so this can get quite annoying. And the other annoying thing was that a USB 2 cable actually comes out of the box, so you don't actually get a USB 3 cable out of the box with the Samsung Galaxy S5. You actually have to go out and get it, which I found slightly odd. Now moving on to the operating systems, both of these devices have Android with KitKat 4.4.2 but you've got TouchWiz on top, so that's Samsung skin on top. The Samsung Galaxy S5 does come with a newer version of TouchWiz, which is generally more cleaner and has more features. The My Magazine is the first feature that you'll notice as soon as you scroll right from your home screen. I personally found this quite annoying and switched it off, but it brings in feeds and displays them quite nicely for some of you who will be using it. But many of the features have also been carried over from the S4 to the S5. So you've got the IR blaster to control your television along with the software. Air view and air gestures have also been carried on. So you can preview images and things using air view, which is quite useful for some. Multi window is another feature that's been carried over. This is quite nice, I do enjoy using this and it really takes advantage of the RAM on both of these devices. Smart pause is here as well on the S5, so if you look away while watching a video, if this mode is switched on, then the video will automatically pause. And you can also use the Samsung Galaxy S5 with gloves as you can do with the Samsung Galaxy S4. So this is very useful if you're from a cold country like I am. Smart scroll has been removed, I believe. I couldn't find it myself on the Samsung Galaxy S5. And this basically scrolls a page up or down based on your head movements. I found this very annoying and I found myself switching it off on the S4. So I'm not too bothered that it's not here on the S5. The left capacitive button has also changed as well. This was initially just a menu option on the Samsung Galaxy S4. On the S5, it's now a multi-window option. So when you click on this, it will open all your recent apps. If you hold onto this, then it will bring you your menu. The S5 also comes with download booster. So this uses both your Wi-Fi and your 4G to give you faster download speeds. I've got a limit on my 4G data, so I didn't try this out. You've also got ultra power saving mode on the Samsung Galaxy S5. Now this turns everything to grayscale and really pushes your battery. This is quite nice to have if you're really struggling and you don't have a power socket or anything nearby and you wanna get the most out of your battery. There's one handed usage mode as well, which makes it easier to use the device with one hand, which you can switch on and off. 
And there's also a toolbox which you can put in some of your most used apps and open them up from anywhere with this floating box. Now there's also two new hardware features on the Samsung Galaxy S5. The first of which is the heart rate monitor at the back of the device. Now you can place your finger on here and it's gonna measure your heart rate. Now this can be used with your S Health apps. It depends, I personally didn't find myself using this much. If you are somebody that's quite active and is gonna be needing that feature, then it is quite useful. And then you've got the fingerprint scanner on the home button. Now this is okay, it's average, it's not brilliant. You do have to swipe pretty accurately and you can only store a maximum of up to three fingers. So I have to say it's not as good as the iPhone 5S Touch ID feature, which you can just touch and do at any angle as well. With this, you have to be very precise. <laughs> Many of the times it was hit or miss, and I did find myself switching this off. Now moving on to the batteries, the S4 has a 2600 milliamp battery. The S5 has a 2800 milliamp battery. And both of these are removable. Now, in terms of usage, the S4 gives me decent use throughout the day. If you're a light to medium user, it should last you the day. If you're a heavy user, you will be needing a top up. And it did deteriorate over time. It was better when I initially got it. The S5 has definitely been improved and it did last me a full day on medium to heavy use. I think if you are more towards a heavy user, then you may be needing a top up. But one thing I would recommend if you're going for either of these devices, is to get an external charger and take full advantage of the removable battery. Now one of these external chargers, you can pick it up for roughly about 20 to 25 pounds in the UK, and it comes with a battery which you can charge independently of the device. So what I do now is as soon as my battery finishes, I put in a fresh one, and then I put the other one on charge. So this way I'm always switching, and I never actually have to be sat next to a charger with my phone connected on, which is a big, big bonus, and it's really, really great to have. I'll drop some links in the description below if you wanna go ahead and pick one of these up. This is something that I would definitely recommend to take full advantage of that removable battery. Now finally, moving on to the price. So the Samsung Galaxy S4, right now you can pick it up for roughly about 300 pounds or roughly about 400 to $450 in the US. So it has dropped quite a bit since the S5 has come out and the fact that it is over a year old now. The Samsung Galaxy S5, you can pick it up for roughly about 500 pounds in the UK around about $600 in the US. Now these prices are off contract, SIM free. So these are the handset only, just to give you a difference in terms of the value of these devices. The Samsung Galaxy S4 now coming in quite a bit cheaper compared to the S5, understandably so. So there we have it, the Samsung Galaxy S5 versus the Samsung Galaxy S4. Now the S5 does offer quite a few new features and improvements, such as the rear facing camera, the heart rate sensor, the fingerprint sensor, the water and dust resistance, the larger screen. But is it a worthy upgrade to the Samsung Galaxy S4? Well, I wouldn't think so. I think if you've got the S4 right now, maybe wait another year. You're most likely on a two year contract as well. So maybe wait another year till we've got the Samsung Galaxy S6. The S4 is still a pretty decent phone and should last you some more time. If however, you are a tech enthusiast and you wanna get the latest gadgets, then the S5 is a great option. It's one of the best smartphones out there at the moment. And it's packed with features and specs which put it amongst the top of its league. What do you think of the Samsung Galaxy S5? Do you think it's a worthy upgrade from the S4? Do drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, as always, please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. And why not subscribe to the channel? I've got plenty more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time. If you want to see more regular videos like this one, then be sure to hit the subscribe button, which will be below. If you're on a mobile device, it may be somewhere else. If you want to see my previous related video, then hit the link right here. If you want to stay in touch over Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, then all of the addresses will be there somewhere, as well as direct links in the description below. Okay, if you're still watching, then that means you've not done one of those things, so... No. Anyway, um, I'm just I'm just gonna go um, downstairs. See. Okay. Um, th there isn't really a downstairs. Anyway. So yeah.